Hello, and welcome back to the last round of Versus Live for the day. Ross Miriam here. We got Todd Anderson there. We got Jerry over there. Say hi, Jerry. Hi. And we got Dan May in the command zone. Hi. Making sure everything runs smoothly. Uh, make sure to tag at SCG Tour in the chat for Jerry to uh, see all your questions and concerns and burns and whatever else you want to put out there. I see a lot of burns. We need, I need, we, we need to close off the burns. I'm getting, I'm getting a little <laughs> southy. Getting, but, a little, getting a little hot. Yeah. Well, I, okay. So last, last match was was pretty tough, right? I was very far ahead. Drew a lot of my good cards in the matchup. And slowly got grind, ground into dust. Thanks to uh, a lot of really cool goblins from your side. Yeah. Munitions expert looked phenomenal, killing a champion of the parish on turn two. Uh, as the game progressed, you started to assemble Pash, uh, Paul, uh, Pashalik Mons. Uh, Pash, yeah. Pashalik Mons uh, alongside Blood Artist and a number of other sacrifice strategies where you mowed down all of my creatures except for the protection from red ones. And even though at one point I was at uh, 56 life, just ended up with nothing. Yeah. Good day. Yeah, if you have no, if no. you have no battlefield, it doesn't much matter how much life you have. Tell, tell us about what we're doing uh, this match. Though, yeah. Okay? So now we are tied one one, which means we're playing for some marbles. Yeah, which means I'm going super serious mode. <laughs> okay. No takesies, backsies. <laughs> no, get to undo my not casting the Ravens crime on the Snapcaster Mage. Well, we got a nice matchup com coming up. Oh yeah. We got Todd actually playing. Is it Phoenix? It's a little strange. Normally, I'm the one playing it. I mean, I, I too play as a phoenix. Yeah. I am a big, is big is it, heart. aficionado, okay. so still good. Okay. We saw him play with Aria Flame on Tuesday. It looked yep. quite impressive. That was yep. in a mono red prowess deck. And the mono red version, using the ritual effects, gave you a lot of extra mana to do cast more spells, whether that's uh, flashing back Faithless Looting, casting a Bedlam Reveler into more stuff on the following turn. But there was one game where, uh, I mean, I, I killed you without it because I had a really nutso draw with double uh, uh, Arclight Phoenix, but I think Aria Flame could just be a win condition by itself that, you know, doesn't really take a whole lot of work to get going. You need uh, just to cast your spells as normal, and eventually your opponent dies. Once you hit the eighth one, if they haven't gained any life, they're dead. That seems pretty good. Yeah, you know, they, it adds up really quickly, so the 10 life is not as big of a barrier as you might think. Mm -hmm. Great alternate win condition that doesn't uh, interact negatively with Thing in the Ice, dodges Graveyard Hate. I'm pretty excited to see how this works. And we are matching you up against you know, a deck that usually plays an interesting kind of matchup. This is a Jund-style deck, and, the, and the, historically the Jund versus uh, Is It Phoenix matchup is quite close. There's a lot of different you know p uh, points of interaction and things yes. to watch out for. But I am playing a Sultai version of the, the you know, Black Green or Golgari X um archetype this is a so that i can take advantage of snow cards in particular ice fang quaddle love it a great way to you know answer an awoken horror i also have fatal pushes and assassin's trophy so my removal will line up pretty well uh hopefully I, after sideboarding i'll be able to deal with phoenixes but in game ones you know recursive phoenixes can be a problem uh i do not have pretty sure i don't have scavenging uses yeah because you, you know you don't have as it's many green choices on yeah the, the mana you know, in order to fit enough snow permanents in the deck, we're going to have to play Prismatic Vista. And I think that's the biggest thing here is how does the mana work out? I'm playing a lot of snow basics. I've got uh, Arkham's Astrolabe to help fix so that I can cast my spells and double spell even when my you know basics might not align perfectly. Yeah, obviously, if, if you take a look at the mana base, actually, there's four snow-covered swamps in your deck with four uh, Ice Fang Quaddle. So it's going to be a little difficult to cast. But luckily, this new bobble that is snow base looks quite good. Yes, and it's going to go a long way towards helping fix the mana, uh, and that's the real the card that I think is going to be central to making these snow decks work because it's the one that lets you play a lot of snow basics in order to get to that requisite density of snow permanence without sacrificing the buttery smooth consistency of the Fetchland Shockland mana bases that we've seen so yeah, you know I for years and now. Absolutely love the fact that it draws a card immediately, and then you have the option later to, to sack it to, to, to color fix. So you get that uh, cycling off of it while keeping a snow permanent on the battlefield for some of these snow effects like the Ice Fang Quattle, like the uh, Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter, yeah. yeah. It's another snow payoff. Uh, not going to be great here, though. It can, you know... Stop a a horde of phoenixes, maybe for a turn or two, especially with all the discard in this deck. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be hard for you to recur phoenix. Finale of Promise might be really important uh, if the game goes long for giving you that one turn where you only need the one card to get them all back and get the engine running. Um, and so, like I said, there's a lot of things going on here. I've got the typical, you know, discard spells, Tarmogoyf, Liliana kind of package. We got our surgicals in the sideboard, mm -hmm. and I'm really just want to see how the snow theme elevates these style of decks. All right, let's call it now. 
two pre, one post. Okay. And then that's it. For, this is for the marbles. Sure. All right. Here we go. You were on the play. I am. I lost last match. My hand already looks great. Love it. Keeping. Uh, yeah, hand looks solid. All right. Now, here, here's a tough call. I almost never want to cast Faithless Looting on turn one. But uh, against discard effects, if he takes away my Faithless Looting, the Arclight Phoenix starts to kind of get stuck in my hand. Um, and I don't really mind discarding like an extra land if I draw one. But I think I just stick to my guns and don't cast the Faithless Looting on one, even though it can get hit with the discard effect. I'm going to go to 18. 18. I'm just going to play Seer Vision and smooth out my draw. All right. Um, Is that smooth enough for you? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. This feels like a top top. Yeah, he's reaching for him pretty quick. Your turn. Okay, well, fortunately for Todd, I do have the discard spell. Let's get a Swamp and Inquisition. Um, so I currently don't have an answer to that Aria of Flame. Whereas if Todd wants to recur that Phoenix, it might be tough for him to do. He has to throw away the gut shot. Yeah. And... Hmm. This is a tough, tough call. If I had a trophy in my hand for that Aria, I'd be very inclined to take the looting here. But I think I am going to make sure that this goes away. Okay. Because Todd doesn't have a lot of cantrips to start that chain with Phoenix. Though he did top top. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a big dum dum. 15. Hooked him. Good job, Todd. I didn't hook him. I thought he was going to take Faith Slooting. It seemed like the obvious pick. But the fact that he doesn't have an answer to the Aria Flame leads me to believe that, uh, you know, this is. It was probably the right move. I just add a second Phoenix on top. So we're going to loot. I'm going to pitch these two. I'm going to play a Serum Visions. Top two. And we will keep both. And then I'll gut shot you. I go to 13. You go to 19. I got 18, 18. I fetched. And then bring back two Phoenixes and pop you. 12. Your turn. Okay, well, I'm probably dead. Yeah, double Phoenix on turn two is quite strong. Let's play an Astrolabe and draw a card. Mm hmm. And play a Delta and pass the turn. Attack six. Four damage. I will fetch to 11, get an island, make a black mana, and push one of the Phoenixes. Oh, that's how that works. Yeah. I thought you had to sacrifice for some nope. reason. That's nope. Way just better. tap. That's awesome. Just so tap and it stays in play. 11, yeah, right. then eight. That's awesome. so. It's gone. Chill. All right. Thing, yeah, it's your turn. Todd obviously not having the third land here to make me look even more foolish. Oh, I had a land on top that I could have kept that I shuffled away. So once you took away the Aria, there's no reason for you to have a third land. Yeah, you'll draw into it eventually. Um, and... Pass the turn. Draw. And Morphos. Yep. Red, red. Manamorphos. Yep. Red, red. Bolt you. I'm at five. Faithless looting. Yeah. Trigger two phoenixes. I am dead. I have a snap bolt for the Awoken Horror, but I'm a five. It's dead to the two phoenixes. Mm, told you snap. Oh, yeah, you can't. Yeah, I could have played a fetch to like do that, but... Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, that was a very, very good draw out of Todd. I think I have... Maybe I have a shot if I take the looting. Well, makes you feel any better. If you took the looting, I drew two lootings on the following two draws or whatever, so... <laughs> But you also fetched on turn two, and you would have yeah, kept yeah. the other land on top. And... Yep, yep, yep. But I think you would have just played the Aria and like. Yeah, I, I, I would have just played of... Aria, and then you would have had to race Aria with no trophy. Yeah. And if you found one, great. You go to thirty, but I'm just gonna kill you with a bunch of bolts and gut shots and 
stuff. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about how you top topped, which is like a pretty strong sign of a second Phoenix. Oh, so like you would also keep some cantrips there too. I would keep Metamorphose and I would keep uh Thing in the Ice probably and maybe Any blue cantrip you're probably keeping. Any blue cantrip, yeah. And a third land is reasonable too. So most of your deck is actually good there. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's a little harder then to sniff out. All right, game two, you're going to be on the play. Let's see if I can have a slightly worse draw. That was a good one, that's for sure. Yeah. But I, I wanted to point out that the Arya looked really scary there for Ross, which yeah. uh, which means that, like, oftentimes you'll see a card, in so, like a new card in someone's deck, and you're like, oh, well, it didn't end up really doing anything. But what it did there is it cascaded into a, an abysmal turnaround for, for, for Ross because he had to take the card that was potentially more scary okay. at the time. I will keep my hand. Me too. Start on Swamp Incision. Probably want that. The rest of my hand's fairly redundant and bad. Uh, yep, definitely you want to take the threat here. All right, uh, Spire Bluff. We're going to Thought Scour before we Faithless because we just want to uh, try to make sure we have a Phoenix in hand when we do it. Uh, I'm going to crack fetch, go to 17 for a Breeding Pool, and play a Tarmogoyf. All right, so currently 3-4. If I uh, play Thought Scour, be 4-5. Yep. All right, so... Could be even bigger if you hit an Aria. I am not going to Thought Scour, and instead I'm going to Flame Flash. Wow. And... Eight. Here you go. Okay. So you're at 18, I'm at 17. That Flame Slash was the best possible draw. Yup. <laughs> it was not bad. And now I am going to just... Crack this for another swamp. There's not a lot of blue in the deck. 16. This does leave me unable to cast Ice Fang Quaddle if I get swamp and not island. But not getting swamp means I can't cast Liliana's. And I think Liliana is more important. What are you casting right now for three mana? I am casting a Snapcaster Mage on Inquisition of Kozilek. Okay. Um, I'm actually kind of fine if he takes the Thought Scour here. So I think I'm just going to show him a handful yeah, of cantrips. No reason to take one looting when he has another. Their card is advantage if he casts them normally, and I can't stop him from returning phoenixes when he has two. So just take the. I guess I could take the gut shot and keep my yeah, Snapcaster it's alive. It's unique. But I also free. I don't know. I, I actually this is kind of a tough. I'm pick. I'm, I'm going to take the Thought Scour. Okay. It's the most like just generically valuable card. You have to treat this like a mid range mirror. Um, hmm. you hmm. probably want to hold the gut shot. You might yeah. like cantrip into a phoenix and then get to or an aria. Yeah. All right. Now because I don't have anything else to do, I'm gonna play a faithless looting, and I'm gonna discard bolt looting. Play a land, and you know I have gut shot. shot. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kill the snapcaster mage. Let's say go. Um, I will pass the turn. I'll scour main. Should have scoured main, right? Hmm? Should have scoured main. In case you oh, because I have Phoenix. Yeah, 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 sorry. Luckily, I didn't get super punished. I go. Yep. Drop a turn. Fetch. Um, you know, our card be pretty good here. Crap, crap, my Drake. <laughs> You're at 17. How's that one? Mm -hmm. That's just sort of undoing the card disadvantage you did with the looting, right? Sure, but I also gained mana off the mana Morphos. Sure. All right. Uh, what are we, are we targeting looting and Morphos? Well, first off, I'm going to play mana Morphos. Sure. Make a red red, draw a card. I will play finale for X equals two targeting Metamorphose as the instant and I don't have Seer Visions or Slide of Hand, that kinda sucks. So I guess Faithless Looting as the other one. So we'll resolve them like this. So we metamorphose yeah. first. I'll make uh, blue make blue blue. Sorry. Alright, so I have two blue blue. Yep, yeah, sorry. Uh, resolve looting. Yep. This card Phoenix and Island. This is exiled. 
finale resolves with the blue blue i'll cast thing in the ice and then trigger move to combat yep attack for three uh we're definitely pushing this thing You're dead. and taking the three i got a 13 your turn finale on man warpo is quite quite cool i like it quite a bit I really want to find a threat here. I think I'm just going to cycle this on Earth. Sure. That counts. I mean, isn't on Earth just a Tarmogoyth? Isn't that the threat you want? Oh, there's a Tarmogoyth in there? Oh my god. Yeah, I killed it with Flame Slash on turn two. Yeah, I just completely forgot that was there. Todd there said was... no takes these backsies. Oh, it's fine. Uh, no, no. What? Okay. Oh, I mean, what'd you draw for the turn? You can... I, I just, I swear I looked over my graveyard. There must have been like a glare. I just completely missed that it existed. That's not the best. Uh, I will cast a Dead of Winter with okay. two snow permanents. Okay. Yeah, I should have had a Tarmogoyf in play. That's probably going to cost me the game. Probably. Uh, Todd's so... definitely drawing nothing but spells. I'm just going to attack you for three. Love um, it. Ten. Go. That's the most Todd Anderson play I've ever seen in my life. I think people are way too greedy about trying oh, to I know. get fancy with their their things. Yeah, if I just had a Goyf in play here, like I should have. Yeah, like How did I just, turns? like, I yeah, it would, this would be the second turn it's attacking. You'd be at nine. I'd have you lethal on... Lethal here, instead of my... Ugh, I've just screwed everything up. Look, when marbles are on the line, everyone makes mistakes. Uh, I've got to get a clue. Maximum VD. Pass the turn. Raw. Slide the hand. Yep. Keep... This one, bottom this one. Looting. Yep. Our two lands and bolt you. Or I'll bolt the tracker. Then bring back pain attack for six. I go to four. Your turn. Should have bolted face. That was the least Todd Anderson play I've seen. I mean, I think the way I lose is if, like, he's able to deal with both these, I kind of fumble for a minute. Yeah, but then he's at one, can't use the fetch land, has to kill both phoenixes. I don't know. I treat Tracker a lot like I treat Planeswalkers, where if you can't kill your opponent, you kill the thing that accrues advantage over time. Like, if he just goes, like, well, you have two snow permits, right? So if he just untaps, cracks clue, plays Dead of Winter for two... I guess, can't, yeah, he can't crack the fetch land. Maybe yeah. that's that's worthwhile. Hmm. No, nah, you're probably right. Maybe that's why mm. my my lizard brain said bolt upstairs, and then I changed my mind. Yo, always go with lizard brain, Todd. Yeah, dude, lizard brain's tight. Lizard brain's super smart. That one's a tilter. You can go. Yes. Do I faith faithfully now or just wait? Just have a land. I think I just attack. Trophy one of them. Okay. You go to one. Yep. All right. Well, now I can hit like bolts and gut shot and. You still you still had those outs. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't, all I'm saying I don't know if I do it post combat now or still wait so I can get maximum value out of the lootings. I think I have two left. Since I have two left, I think I go ahead and burn one. Yeah. I have three left. Okay. Punch and burn one then. Get a cut for a draw. You're good. All right. Loot. All right. Gotcha. You. Okay. Marbles. Give him some marbles. I think. I think I would have lost to that gut shot if I played the goif. Because it. But I would have forced you to find the burn spell to kill me. Sure. All right. You want to play sure. uh, one post board? Yeah. Let's do one post board. All right. Get questions in. We're going to take quite a few because these games are going pretty fast. Uh, but we're going to take a short break here while we get sideboards put together. Make sure to add SCG Tour in the chat. We'll be right back for more versus live. And we're back here for sideboarding with Sultai Snow against Aria Phoenix. Uh, on my side, I think these four cards are the worst in the deck. Um, Todd's actually usually not able to uh, kill my creatures very effectively. You saw I had the Flame Slash for my Goyf in the previous game, so the Unearth was good if I you know 
looked at my graveyard and somehow you know seen all the cards. Look, but, I, I'll say this: sometimes you get tunnel vision, <laughs> and and sometimes with new cards, you kind of forget what they do. They just kind of get set in the back of your mind. I just looked over at my graveyard and only saw a Snapcaster Mage. Sure, just didn't see a Tarmogoyf, but it was there. Yeah, uh, Liliana Last Hope. You know, the plus one doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, Again, I don't really want to be rebuying my threats that often. I think they're mostly going to stay on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. We do have another nice threat here in Kalidus yeah, that should like help take over games. Our surgicals are obviously great against Phoenixes. And then one Maelstrom Pulse as another answer to Aria, but also a good answer to Saheeli. You can either clear the Planeswalker early or you know clear out a bunch of tokens all at once. Yep. I don't really like Dead of Winter because it's not very effective outside of Saheeli, but Maelstrom Pulse fortunately gives us another answer here. And then I'm trimming one Liliana. Um, and you know, they can be they can be really good, but I don't want to draw you know a huge number of them. It's not a super important part of the game plan because Todd's able to operate from the graveyard to some extent. So I think trimming one is fine. Yep. On my side, uh, we are going to be trimming the gut shot simply because the only real target that matters is Icewind Quaddle and only against Thing in the Ice. I don't even really care if it trades with a an Arclight Phoenix because I can get them back pretty easily. Um, you know, it is a free spell, so there is some. Um, interest in leaving in the free spells when you can because they allow for the more explosive start but almost every deck in in modern after sideboard is either going to have surgical extraction or some other way to hammer your graveyard to make arc phoenix a bit worse so you need to make sure that you have a bit of a, uh, an alternate game plan after board and we've gone with Sahili sublime artificer which i think is a little bit harder to deal with than young pyromancer I like it quite a bit, and it's uh, you know particular. It's not nearly as bad with uh, Thing in the Ice because even if it transforms and bounces all your tokens, it still sits on the battlefield, so you don't have to recast it where you have to recast the Young Pyromancer. Yes. Uh, and then one Narset as just this maybe a card draw engine since Ross does have quite a bit of discard and things like that. So we want a couple of permanents that are a little harder for him to kill, uh, and present alternate threats for him to deal with. Okay. All right, questions please. Yeah, uh, a few people in chat want to know why you played Rebuild over Hercules Recall on your sideboard. Uh, it's new, and I, I kind of want to, to try it out in case Ross paired me against an artifact-based deck. Um, Rebuild has always, or no, has been in sideboards for as long as I can remember, even when it was legal in the same format as Hercules Recall, um, which leads me to believe that you know sometimes the cycling matters. So. Not not a hundred percent on it, but uh, not only does the cycling matter, but you know all the War Prison decks play Witchbane Orb, and Rebuild gets around Witchbane Orb. Yeah, doesn't target the player. That's a good call on that. I don't know that it's better than Shatterstorm. You know, it costs one less mana, and I believe it's an instant, right? Yep. So like the fact that it's instant, the fact that it costs one less mana might make it a little bit better than Shatterstorm. Um, the fact that it doesn't target might make it a little better than Hercules Recall. So I just put it in there as a placeholder. I, whenever a new set comes out with cards that I think could potentially see play, even if I'm not 100% that it's better than something we already have access to, at the very least, I want to show you that it exists and that this is where I'm thinking of potentially putting it. And I, and I actually want to play matches with the card to see if it is good. Another question from Tish MTG who asks, on a scale of 1 to Eye of Ugin... How busted is Narset in modern now with the new time twister? Mm, uh, mm, I think Narset is just busted. I don't think the new time twister is going to make that any different. Like people have been trying out the days and doing stuff and you can yeah, discard the new uh, time twister to faithful suiting and cast it for three mana. But yeah, we, we already have access to this combo. There's not a, a big difference between days and doing and time twister when you have Narset in play. You're probably tapping out, tapping really low for it anyway. This adds another hoop where you have to get the, the time twister into your graveyard. I like in Legacy being able to go Narset, LED, time twister. Yeah, that that's seems messed up. Right, that seems a little better in days and doing because you get to do it in one burst. So yeah, so uh, I, I'm I'm not I'm not sold on the time twister in modern. Sure. All right, uh, let's so, get to our game. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're a little getting towards the end, um, and I have a solid hand. Amy, too. I will fetch for a swamp and inquisition you. Uh, I will. Wow. Yeah. If he doesn't have surgical, this hand is insane because it means that I am probably getting a phoenix on two. I mean, I'm definitely taking the manamorphos. Sure. Uh, because that's going to slow Todd down the most, and I need time, and then I'll pass. All right. I think I'm just going to play Delta 
and a crack tapped. Your turn. Faithless looting is like the one cantrip that you don't want to just fire off early. Well, that metamorphose, I suppose. Uh, fetch to 18, get a forest, and play Tarmbuff. I think you mean a snow covered forest. That I do. I will fetch. And unfortunately for us, Flame Slash actually doesn't kill Goyfear because it. Or, no, no, it does. 3 4. Never mind. So you're at Hopefully 19, you I'm at 18. This is a 3 4. Really hope we draw Metamorphose because we no longer have Gutshot in our deck. We have quite a few draws that are good, though. Do you want to cut? I see no, you're good. Make a red, 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 and draw one. What's that with you? A second arc light, and a third arc light, <laughs> and a third arc light. Surgical, and or? Thing, draw two, and a fourth arc light, and a fourth arc light. <laughs> <laughs> and we attack for 12 and 32 through a discard spell. <laughs> <laughs> I am at six. Ross, did you want to call it, or? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a draw that's good. Oh my god. <laughs> Especially through a discard spell, man. <laughs> mm. Oh, mm. get him, Ross. Uh, fetch to five. Teach him a lesson. What's he going to do? Oh, is he going to talk to Deluja and then I'm just going to play land number three and then. You can't find him back. Oh, no, rats. I guess I'll just have to figure out some other way to do that. Um, that was it. Pulse of Phoenixes. They're dead. You got a surgical now? I do not. Uh, you have five? This is a four or five now? I believe that is true. Yep. I'm at five. You're at 15. You can go. All right. Let's start with a slide of hand. Yep. Take this one. And then we will thought scour me. And then thought scour me. Mills over fifth arc light phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some 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 crap. All right. All right, we did it. Man, I can see why people like this arc light phoenix deck. It seems pretty good. Yep. Good job, Mr. Ross. Mr. Plow. That's his name. That name again is Mr. So the the Jun style decks are quite well situated to handle the thing of the ice plan. It's the Arclight Phoenix plan that really grinds through their removal effectively, yeah. and that's why Surgical is so important. Um, I, I was, you know, staring down eight Phoenixes across three games on the first seven turns. That's this, uh, is, this is what you've been doing to people. Just wanna, <laughs> you know, this is your fault. Mostly. Well, not not quite that. But I mean, maybe close. not that much, but this is mostly your fault. Just so you know. <laughs> so I mean, people probably would have figured it all out at some point, but like, yeah. you know, you did it. Thanks. Is this what I've been doing to people? Yeah. Oh, man, I deserve to be here. <laughs> All right. So, um, didn't get to see Aria Flame, but the fact that uh, you had to take it with an Inquisition, I thought was the key hmm. point. Might have been a mistake. But then we would have seen Aria Flame. And, it, you know, if I don't draw the trophy, it probably takes over. But taking the looting gives me more time, sort of the answer to the second thing. So, um I, I would end up drawing the second Phoenix. I would have cast Aria Flame on three. Flashback Looting Pitch, two Phoenix on four. We would have had a game of it. You would have gained ten life, so if you found the answer to it, it would have took me a little bit longer to kill you. Uh, some tar A Tarmogoyf somewhere in there would have put a significant clock on me. It would have been a fun game. I I, I, I actually wish it had gone the other way. Because yeah. we, we've seen the Phoenix thing, the, the song and dance before. There's a reason why it's like the most played deck in modern or the most prevalent in top eights over the last you know, six to eight months or whatever. So, yeah, no, the, uh, still, you know, doing its powerful thing. Uh, also didn't really get to see a lot of the snow theme. Like I, I never drew an ice fan quaddle. Yeah. And, uh, the, I did astrolabe in game one and it was solid. It let me, you know, not have to fetch shock. I just got mm -hmm. to, you just get to get all basics, you know, only give yourself a couple points of damage yeah. and then fix your mana effectively. So I liked seeing that the astrolabe there, but, um, not a lot to say about the new cards of these decks. That's just how the game shake out, you know. I mean, modern is is all about some high powered decks. So the the cards you you draw or the card the new cards you put into a deck have to shine, and we and you also just have to draw them and cast them. And 
in your version, you know, you played a couple of the snow cards, but they, you didn't really get the, the full-on collateral. But we did see Dead of Winter, and it was okay the one time you cast it. You know, killed, like, two Phoenixes and bought you a little time. But it's really going to be good against those, like, human variants. And, <laughs> yes. and maybe Goblins now that it got a lot of new tools or just all the creature-based decks in the format, Dead of Winter is going to be tight against. Yeah, and, you know, those matchups, you would think, you know, a lot of efficient removal and some would be pretty good against humans. And that's what a lot of people thought, you know, a year ago. But as the matchup played out, you realize that like, Thalia matches up really well against mm -hmm. what they're trying to do. And the humans deck was uh, enough lower to the ground relative to the, the Jun style decks that they were able to effectively race them and aggro them out, especially with Reflector Mage for those right. Tarmogoyfs. So Dead of Winter being this really efficient sweeper in those matchups, certainly an upgrade on both, you know, Damnation slash Languish and on uh, Cry of the Carnarium, you know, on either side of it, no. being able to go minus three, minus three on turn three, yeah, you know, yeah. handle Mantis Riders. Sometimes even four if you yeah. have the, uh, yeah, the Astral or the Astrolabe. So yeah. Um, definitely something to keep in mind. I, you know, when, when we first started exploring the potential of Modern Horizons a few months ago, when we were seeing, like, is this card okay to reprint in Modern Horizons? One of the cards we tried out was Toxic Deluge. And Toxic Deluge, honestly, might be worse than this card. It doesn't, you know, obviously you have to play uh, a wonky mana base, but if you can kind of mold your spells to fit the mana base, Dead of Winter is quite good. You yeah. know, not having to deal damage to yourself is really huge in a format with fetches and shocks. Um, and, you know, when you just pair with like a large cheap creature like a Tarmogoy for uh, I wouldn't even not I wouldn't even mind seeing it with, um, you know, some some potential like artifacts or enchantments that turn into creatures. Like you can play them early and then uh, like not Chimeric Idol, but something pretty similar. Like that might be a throwback where you could yeah. play this Wrath effect at sorcery speed for very cheap with, without killing your own threats. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if there's a powerful enough option that fits that mold. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just you play more Tasker or Gurmag Angle yeah, or whatever. I, and then, that's what I was thinking. Sure. I think with all of there's 12 fetch lands in this deck, mm -hmm. which is a huge number, uh, you, you could definitely get some Taskers in there. You can activate it pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, so that that might be another uh, good cheap creature. I really wanted to pair the fetch lands with Tireless Tracker. Uh, yeah, not as true. good with Dead of Winter, but I think a more powerful card. Uh, uh, but, you know, didn't really come to fruition there. All right. Uh, what time is it? Got close, close to four, I think. All right, let's do subs. We got subs. Yeah, I think we got some subs. All right, hit me. All right, let's scroll back a little bit. We got a lot of followers as usual. Thank you to all the followers. Appreciate it. Let's start with uh, Guy Fieri Ball. Resubscribe for a fourth month. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Take it to Flavor Town. Um, <laughs> nice one. Craig H A. Subscribe with a tier two sub. Tier hey, two, nice. nice. Tier two. Do we do we have a tier two sub emote? You know, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I don't either. I, I was always too afraid to put a tier two sub emote because, like, who am I? Yeah. You know? Why would anyone give me a tier who two are sub? We anyway? And that's the only reason I haven't gotten a tier two for you. Really? Mm hmm Okay. All right. K Doherty 2 gifted a sub. Thank tier you. one is awesome. Xander the greatest. Oh, nice. What's up, Xander? Uh, let's see. The Fancy Lion with a Prime Sub. Nice. And that's it. And a bunch more followers. Thank you to each of you that have followed us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, if, if you have a moment, make sure to click the follow button at the top of the Twitch page. If you're on mobile, it's a little heart icon that's next to the chat. Uh, basically, get, you have the option to turn off like the email notifications, things like things like that. I don't want to, you to you know get bugged whenever we we get go live but whenever you go to twitch we will show up on the left hand side of your page and we really appreciate it if you hit that follow button um modern horizons uh full set out tomorrow right yeah so we're gonna hopefully get a lot of cool common zone comments to evaluate should be a lot of fodder for for next week's articles and such uh my article this week is actually on aria flame and all the different uh builds that i want to try with it coming up here soon uh it's on starcgames.com you can go check it out right now it's on the premium side if you're a premium subscriber you can uh check it out uh, that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, so we have no event this weekend on the SCG tour. We're going to be gearing up for SCG con next week with uh, the invitational. So we are actually not going to have a show on Thursday because they're going to be busy setting up for that. We're going to have one show next Tuesday. We're actually going to get Jerry over here oh, yeah. under the lights on the camera. We're going to be battling our 
uh, well, I'm I'm casting the Invitational, but I'm going to be bringing the two decks that I think I will most likely play if I were would to be playing, and Jerry's going to do the same thing. And I think we're just going to have like two long matches between our decks, one standard, one modern, uh, and then we're going to have a lot of Q and A. Ross is going to be in the booth, yep. uh, hanging out and 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 doing all the questions. So should be a really fun time on Tuesday. So make sure you come hang out for that. And I'm going to win the marbles and then just take them home. Yeah, I mean Emma already won a couple and took them with her. Oh, really? <laughs> I won the jar back. We she was on here twice and and she won the first one. I luckily won the second one, or else, God forbid, we wouldn't have any more marbles to fight over. <laughs> I don't know why I I want them so bad. They're nothing. They mean nothing, but they mean everything. Just can't turn it off. No, look, if I got something to fight for, baby, I'm fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Todd is definitely a fighter. So going to have a fun week next uh, Tuesday. Then we're going to have uh, everybody descend upon Roanoke for SCG Con Summer. It's going to be a great time. You know, a huge schedule of events starting Thursday all the way through Sunday. So if you can make it into Roanoke for that, that's going to be great. We'll all be here. So come say hi. If not, you can catch all of the invitational on twitch.tv slash SCG Tour, which is right here. Yeah, and sometimes we end up uh, covering one of the cool side events, too. I know the, the last SCG Con, we actually did... The uh, the cube we were gonna well we were gonna do the whole cube thing but then we got snowmageddon yeah and then uh, we all ended up only doing the draft and like maybe the finals or something got the top eight uh, the top or maybe eight. just the finals I don't it was, remember it was rough uh, yep. but we'll catch a lot of stuff yeah we'll, we'll we'll get you the invitational we got a bunch of different commentator crews for that yeah yep. just got uh, Cedric Patrick myself and Ryan over turf we're gonna yeah. be doing the the bulk of it so awesome so uh that's gonna be great and then the following week i think we're just gonna jump back into modern horizons yeah we'll I have mean, the full set by then full exploration of modern uh we're gonna have like three weeks with no event uh or something like yeah, that two, or two, two after two, the two SCG weekends Con. with no event um so we're gonna be just trying out new modern decks with new cards you know i think there's a there's a lot of potential. I mean, I just saw a card that was printed while we were on break. Um, three mana, one, one for blue, white, and one. Um, it gets a, was a plus one, plus one counter or whatever, something gets exiled. But then during every end step, you get to blink a thing. So if you have a bunch of cool enter the battlefield stuff, you just momentarily blink every end of your turn. You know, repeatable effects like that are pretty sweet. You know, there's a lot of really powerful enter the battlefield effects in modern. It's a spirit might have some cool and spirits deck you can play with like reflector mage in your spirits deck seems kind of cool yeah i don't know if it's good it's cool yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot to unpack there trying to find a home for it but a, a powerful effect if it just sticks around and spirits is really good at making sure their creatures stick around <laughs> sorry i was no. securing marbles no worries yeah all right. Well, that's going to do it for Versus Live, everybody. Thanks for the subs, follows. Thanks, for everybody, for watching. Thanks to Jerry for hanging out in the booth. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Dan, for keeping the show running. Thanks for Ross for being such a good sport. I know I needle you a lot. I know I'm a little mean sometimes. I'm sorry. No, let's just it's balance out from chat needling you. Com I'm, I have a very competitive nature. And I know it comes out. I've, uh, I've come to Roll realize Tide. That. Roll Tide. Also, whoever in the chat, uh, if I see you, what's his name? <laughs> WB Du Bois or whatever? Don Delilah. Yeah, dead. WB Du Bois? Banned. Where, where do you get that? Ban I don't know. Because he has some... Whatever. He's, he's banned. If I see him in chat, you're gone. Okay? All right. Uh, we'll see you next time on Verge Live next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. See you later.